In this video, we're going to look at another proof, and we're going to be looking at the limit of a composite function and here's what we're going to be trying to prove we're going to be trying to show that if f and g are functions such that the limit as x goes to c of g of x is equal to L and the limit as U goes to L of F of U is equal to F of L then the limit as X goes to C of F of G of X is equal to F of L so given that these two limits are true these two statements are true we are trying to show that this limit is also true. So to do that, I'm going to erase this so I can make some more room. And we're going to go ahead and look at the two given limits, see what they show us, and see how we can use them to prove that third limit. So I'm going to divide this board into three columns. So the first limit I'm going to look at is going to be the limit as u goes to l of f of u and we said that this is equal to f of l so I'm going to take a look at what this tells us now that means as u the input of our function f is getting closer and closer to l f of u is getting closer and closer to f of l so we know based on the definition of a limit that for any epsilon greater than zero there exists a delta and I'm gonna call it delta sub 1 just means that for any epsilon greater than 0 there is some other number delta so I'm gonna call it delta sub 1 greater than 0 such that when 0 is less than the absolute value of u minus L is less than delta sub 1 so when u, the absolute value of u minus l is greater than 0 but less than delta sub 1 so when this is true then the absolute value of f of l minus f of u is going to be less than epsilon okay so let's take a look at what this means that means if I was to write a a number line or draw a number line of u values for my function f where I'm making inputs so this is u values and I had some u value of L right here if I was to pick any u values inside the interval L plus Delta 1 and L minus Delta 1 except at L if I was to pick any u values in this interval so u values right here and u values right here I would know that the absolute value of f of l minus f of u is less than epsilon. I'm going to go one step further. I want to find out specifically in this instance what happens if u equals l. So if u equals l, is the absolute value of f of l minus f of u less than epsilon? Well, the absolute value of f of l minus f of u becomes the absolute value of f of u minus f of u. Or no, sorry. If u equals l, it becomes the absolute value of f of l minus f of l, which is equal to zero, which is certainly less than epsilon. So now I know that not only for all the values of u inside this interval excluding l does the statement hold true, but the statement actually also holds true at l. So for all the values inside this interval, if I pick a u value inside this interval, the absolute value of f of l minus f of u will be less than epsilon. So that's good to know. We're going to use this in a second. I'm going to start looking at the next limit, the limit as x goes to c of g of x, and we said that this limit is equal to l. So what does this let me know? It tells me for any epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that when 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus c, is less than delta then 
the absolute value of, sorry, this should be g of x, not f of x, g of x minus l is going to be less than epsilon. And this comes from the definition of a limit. For any epsilon greater than zero, I can find that delta greater than zero. And this is the kind of tricky part. I know that this is true for any epsilon value greater than zero. In fact, I can set my epsilon value equal to the delta sub one value I found here for this epsilon value, because this epsilon value over here can be any value I want it to. So I'm choosing to set it to this delta sub one value. And I know that for that value, there will be another delta value such that when zero is less than the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then the absolute value of g of x minus l will be less than delta sub one. So let's look at a little number line of x values and see what this tells me. So I'm looking at my x values here, and I have c right here. I know that if I pick any x values from x, or sorry, from, I should say from c minus delta to c plus delta, excluding c itself, if I pick any x values in here, I will get back a g of x value that is in an interval such that is in an interval defined by this delta one value. So if I pick any x value inside this interval between c minus delta and c plus delta, I will get back a g of x value. So this is g of x, where if this is l, and this is l plus delta one, and this is l mi minus delta one, I will get back a g of x value in here somewhere. That's what I know now. I know that if I pick an x value inside c minus delta and c plus delta, but maybe not at c, I don't care what it is at c, I will get back a g of x value inside this interval l minus delta one, l plus delta one. But wait, if I was to take this g of x value and plug it into my f of u function, if I was to say that u equals g of x, so I'm taking g of x, I'm plugging it, I'm taking the value I get from g of x and I'm plugging it into f of u, then I know that if I was to pick that g of x value inside this interval between l minus delta one and l plus delta one, I know based on this number line and this statement right here that I will get back an f of g of x value that is sufficiently close to f of l. And it, oh, this doesn't actually really matter, but you can write this, it's easier to understand, like this, f of u minus f of l, instead of f of l minus f of u, you can write it either way. But what I'm saying is that if I pick an x value inside this interval, not at c itself, I will get back a g of x value inside this interval. And if I was to plug the g of x value I got back, we know that if my input for f of u is inside this interval, which is the same interval, these two are the same intervals, so when I plug these g of x values into f of u, into f of g of x, I get back an f of g of x value that is sufficiently close to f of l, based on this interval right here. And what does that interval look like? It looks something like this, where this is f of l, and I will have f of l plus epsilon, and f of l minus epsilon, so when I plug in my g of x values that I get from these x values, I will get back an f of g of x value somewhere in here, including at f of l. So what does this tell me? That tells me for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists, let me lower that a little bit, just to make sure it's on frame. So for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that when zero is less than the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta. So when I'm picking x values from this interval, then f, the absolute value of f of g of x minus f of l is less than epsilon. So when I'm picking x values from this interval, 
I will always get back f of g of x values in this interval. And this holds true for any epsilon I will find a delta. Why? Because based on these limits, we know for any epsilon I will be able to find a delta 1, and for any delta 1 value over here, I will find a delta. And what this lets me know, if I know this to be true, by the definition of a limit, I know that the limit as x approaches c of f of g of x is equal to f of l. And that is the proof. That's how you know that if the limit as u approaches l of f of u is equal to f of l, and the limit as x approaches c of g of x is equal to l, then the limit as x approaches c of f of g of x is equal to f of l.